But hey, did you guys all come to the concert last night? Yeah! How fun was that? Yeah! When the, uh, what did you sing? What, what did I sing? Well, yeah, no, I played drums. Oh, you didn't sing anything? No, I don't sing. You played the bongo. I, yeah. I heard you played the bongos backstage. Yeah. It's, it's a funky rhythm. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. That's a funny joke, though. What's uh, it called? It's called a djembe, but of course. Haley was calling it a bongo, a single. His girlfriend was calling it a, a bongo instead of bongos. It's what? A, yeah, it's a, you're quite that anal about this. What's that? You're quite anal about this, aren't you? The, the, the name of the drum. No. What, what, no, what? you can call it a bongo if you want. Bongo. But, but, but it's but one bongos? That's the name of it. It's a one bongos? Well, that was the joke. Oh. But it's not. It's a djembe. It's bongo. I get it. There you go. I get it. I, I just got it too. I get it. Shall we take some questions? Wrong guy. Which way do you want to go first? Okay, go over here. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Morning. Uh, hi, Jake. My question's for you. Okay. Uh, I was curious what your first day back on set was like, if the writers or Jared or Jensen apologized for forgetting them for you, about you for 10 years. <laughs> well, you know what's really funny is my, the first day back, uh, no one was there. It was my show. It was all me, baby, which was great, which was great. Uh, they came in on the second day, and boy, when Jared and Jensen come on set, I don't know if you guys feel this, but like, you feel them come on set. I know, they're quite heavy. They're heavy, it's like this energy, they just like come in like two big oxes, and you're like, oh, the boys are here, and, it, and, and everything gets disrupted, uh, but it was so great to see them. I see them very sporadically at conventions, uh, but... Um, some really nice stuff happens in this episode that I think the fans are really going to like. And, and Rich Spade directed the episode. Sorry about that. I mean, uh, and he really fought for some moments like that were, uh, I think, really special. And, and friends of mine who are fans of the show had made the, uh, their own requests. Uh, what they want to happen, and I think they'll be happy. So. Is that the one that's airing this Thursday? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Oh, geez, that, would be, that would be a pretty quick turnaround. It would be very quick. Yeah. 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 Imagine Rich back there editing. Yeah, Spade, what the fuck, Spade? Right it's it's episode eight. eight. Episode eight. Oh, it's the one you just filmed. Okay. Yeah. yeah, episode eight. So, yeah. Thanks. That's cool. Yeah, no, the weight of Jared and Jensen arriving on set, it's quite, it's quite, it's amazing. Because I had my first day with, um, um, Brona, who's an Irish actor that was in, the, was killed in the, the first episode of season 12. Um, and I, I, I'd not met them, and then the second day when I was filming with Jerry and Jensen in, the, in this bunker where he was, Jared was being tied to a chair, it was the funniest day on set, and it was really baptism of a fire because I was playing this Cockney guy, and um, no. uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm Irish, so I put on an accent and everything was crazy. Um, and, uh, and Jared just pretended not to understand. Whenever I, I introduced myself and we had a chat, and then I started acting, and Jared was like, wait, wait, wait cut. Cut, and I've never seen an actor cut to, 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 to cut. I can't understand what he's saying. What's he saying? And they were just whining. Ooh. And they were just winding me up. And it was such a great baptism of fire. And it's really kind of like, you know, brought you into the swing of, of what it is the SBN family. Yeah, there's no mercy. No. <clears throat> right before you're about to do your coverage of your scene, Jared's usually doing something distracting. Yeah. Yeah. Farting. Making jokes. <laughs> it's a hostile work environment, to say the least. <laughs> Hi there. Um, first of all, Jake, you are one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen. So. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm glad I came today. Hey, Sunday morning in Burbank. <laughs> That's how we do it. I got a good curve. Is that a question? <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> Where did you get it done? Where did you get your work Next done? question. <laughs> uh, my question is actually for you too. Um, so when you like found out you were playing Adam, did you make like any conscious acting decisions based off of how Jared and Jensen played Sam and Dean? Clearly. <laughs> Sammy! That's how I got the part. I just walked in the room and was like, Sammy! They were like, yeah, let's give it to that guy. Um, I do, I think I've noticed, even like you and Misha, I feel like we're on, we fall into the trap of all talking down here. <laughs> it's, it's hard not to just talk down here all day long, because everyone's got this like rich, gravelly voice. Um, but uh, uh, not so much because like Adam, you know, wasn't really raised around them, but um, the differences came for me between Michael and Adam. And those are differences that I, uh, I probably got to explore a little bit more 
Uh, but the voice was the big thing, I guess. If there was anything analogous to them, yeah. It was uh, cool. dropping down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> so, do you, you want to come up and give me a kiss? <laughs> I'll <be> easy now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Good morning. morning. What time is it? 11 uh, 11.05. Still morning. Okay, cool. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I feel bad because my question is also for Jake. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> So, it's okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Yay! What's up, Billy? So, the morning fat bag was the baby. Okay, what's your question? <laughs> if you were a tree. <laughs> Good question. You guys have had this question? Yeah. Okay. What kind of tree would you be? Is, there, is this a joke or is this like a. <laughs> you gonna tell me something about myself based on the tree that I pick? <laughs> no. Actually, I know, I know what kind of tree I'd be. It's called a shimmering aspen. <laughs> it's not a I joke. I knew you'd have a good answer. A, shim a shimmering ass man? <laughs> a shimmering ass man. It's a good one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's called a shimmering aspen. Uh, and their leaves, when the wind blows, they like they actually shimmer, and it's incredible. And if you're in a place that has a bunch of them, it's like one of the most amazing things you can cool. see. Yeah, it's like a, a murmuration of like birds and stuff like that. You yeah, know, that, that yeah, it's, like, it's actually really. So feel free, go look it up on YouTube later. Shimmering aspen. Not right now. Not right now. Oi, when I they're see. answering questions, down. feel free. Put it down. No, put down the phones. Is it? Is what I just saw. I saw a cool murmuration video the other day. It's just amazing. Right? They're all moving, They're all moving yeah. in sync with each other. It's really cool. You wouldn't want to be like the stupid brother in the middle and just go, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Was that a good answer? Yeah, it was a good, some people. Oh, you shrugged, well, it's okay. There are, no, there are no good answers. I said oak tree, so come on, it's better. Predictable. Yeah, exactly. I, was, I, was, I was at a loss. Hi. Uh, my question is actually for Adam. Yes. <laughs> uh, my character's Adam. <laughs> I said that backstage, by the way. He goes, isn't Adam supposed to be with us? I was like, my character's name is Adam. It's probably me. I like your top side and everything, but everyone else loves it. I'll fade to the mist. Uh, my question is that if they bring Mick back, like, Ketch has had a lot of character development in the past couple of seasons, so, like, how do you think he'd react? Like, would he still be, like, extremely pissed that he shot him in the back of the head? Oh, how would Mick react to Ketch, or how would Ketch react? Both. I don't care how Ketch would react. Uh, I hope really badly. Um, I don't know, like, um, I think, like, I've had this, a similar kind of question um, at a couple of conventions. I don't know, I, I think I'd like to, um, I'd like to get revenge on Catch, but I like working with David so much that I would like to keep working with him, so I don't want to kill him. But it is the last season, so maybe I'd kill him at the end, or something like that. You know, like, we're going to be... The final shot. The shoot. final shot, of course, whatever, Sam and Dean have gone off to, you know, uh, Six Flags or something, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and me and David Hayden Jones. No, but uh, like I, I I'd like to I'd like to have a um, a couple of scenes with him, but, uh, and uh, kind of. But I would like to torture him a little bit, you know. Maybe burn his feet. <laughs> that sounds like all of mine and David's scenes. <laughs> you tortured him? Oh yeah, yeah. I kicked the shit out of him. Nice. <laughs> I never did. I, of course, I watched the show, um, but I, I missed the missed scene. Oh no, it was good. It was fun. I, that's awesome. awesome. But my head slammed it down. It got blood on my suit. I had the whole thing. Fucking yeah! I never knew that about you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, take a photo of that. But fucking David Hayden Jones. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Hi guys. So hi. hi. My question is for all three of you. Uh, Thank so God. <laughs> So, earning your money now. <laughs> Only a reason I woke up. 
<laughs> so my question is, if you were to have a Supernatural spin-off starring the three of your characters, what would that look like? <laughs> <laughs> the most gorgeous man in the world and his two friends. <laughs> Feels right. <laughs> what are we doing now? What are we doing today, Adam? Whatever you want to do, man. You're so cool. I lost all my powers, so, you know, I'm, I'm following this guy. Huh? Follow me. <laughs> okay. Like that. Like that? Perfect. <laughs> Turns out it'd be a comedy. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I love old theory, but my question is actually for Jeffrey. She says actually. <laughs> yeah. Surprising enough as it is. Okay. So Hi I was there. wondering. Gabriel to use, to use Medeus, but how did Asmodeus actually torture him to the point where Gabriel was just completely out of it? I'm sorry, say, say what? <laughs> <laughs> I, we know Loki sold um, Gabriel to Asmodeus, but yes. why, other than just like digging his grace, what else did he do to the point where Gabriel was just like completely out of it? Well, as we all know, Gabriel was the, he likes to talk, so. He got on uh, Asmodeus' last nerve, and that's why he sewed his mouth shut. So that's one thing that he did. Um, and then, just for shits and giggles, he beat the shit out of him. Dude, you played the coolest character in the world. Thanks, man. Can I just see what the f what is going on here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was National Period Day yesterday. Congratulations, guys. But like, you know, and then I found out on Twitter that there's actually a tax yeah. on tampons. Because yeah. we're in luxury. Yeah. Fuck me. <laughs> what a crazy world we live in, right? Well, I support you guys. i give them to you for free if I could. Uh, I'm sorry? Sorry? Oh, okay, yeah, you just mentioned it. Okay, you, you actually want to do it. Up. You told us you wanted to do it. There's a way. No. <laughs> yeah, pass for everybody. It's over the last time that I passed. Tap on fight. Pass for everybody. Okay, I'm moving swiftly along. How are you? You know, there's some guys that are afraid to go to a grocery store and buy, like, tampons. Not I enjoy know. it. Amazing. I buy Superflow every time I go in. I'm like, uh, 16 packs of them and just walk over there. One guy. of those weeks. <laughs> I'm having a bad day, man. I like to put down a variety. I go the pads, the tampons. This is like... I like hey, to give my wife options. Anyway. <laughs> she deserves it. Oh, dear. Thank you. Not flex. There you go. Plenty of absorption everywhere. Um, hi. <laughs> talented, clever, creative actors, and we all love you and know it. I see where this is going. <laughs> so, on that note, obviously you're going to get commercial deals, endorsements, so I'm wondering, how would you creative, fun guys, in character, endorse us buying or destroying this potato? A potato. Oh, that's uh, racist. <laughs> yeah, you take this one. Yeah. Like, you know, you started off well, but I'm still free, Bob. <laughs> That's my endorsement. I do, I'd like to do a state farm ad, because I don't think it's been done. No, you, have, like to potato potato ad. Ad. you have to do a potato ad. You have to do a potato, potato ad. ad. Okay. Do the potato ad, I Bring the potato ad. Thank you. Thank you very Listen, much. Listen, get this. Yeah, first of all, this ain't no ordinary potato. <laughs> it got some sort of wicked symbol on it. So, I guess it would be a commercial for the for some wicked French fries. Huh? Uh, some French potatoes. Uh, mine, mine, would, mine would be a, uh, there's the tag at the end of the potato commercial. It'd be like, this potato can go to hell. Hey! I, you know, I should have given it to you first, and now I'm going to top that. <laughs> Just 
like a pretty little famine kid. It's gonna It's gonna kill four million people. Anyway, no, that's terrible. Um, yeah, potatoes. They were the they were the Hitler of Ireland, really. There's your ad. Yes, thank you. It's a public service announcement. Potato, the Hitler of Ireland. <laughs> and knock her out with a dent. That's the largest potato I think I've ever seen. It's a very big potato. It's a big sport. So this next questionnaire reminds me of the first time I went to a, a con. It was in Vegas, and I was still getting familiar with the show. And someone dressed just like you walked up, and I was like, oh, look, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> Have you seen Supernatural or Harry Potter? <laughs> I'm not in Doctor Who, so that's like not too <laughs> bad. So my question is for Jake. Yes. And, um, yes, Harry. <laughs> so uh, Chuck commanded all of the angels to love humans more than himself. So I'm wondering, because Michael wanted to be the good son, do you think that he loved humans and over time became indifferent to them, indifferent to them, or that he just really didn't care about humans but wanted to follow Chuck's command? Adam or, or Michael? Michael. Uh, oh, well, you know what? We kind of, without giving too much away, we kind of deal with that in episode eight that we just did. There's some stuff there that, um... Threading and things, everybody. A Sunday morning of Burbank, and I don't give a shit. Here's what happens. I think this is going well. Take it! The last convention, everybody. How to lose a crowd. But there's, I think, uh, instead of me giving uh, an answer based on what I know, I think you should watch episode 8. And that will help. Promo. Airing, I don't know when. Six weeks, six That's weeks. That's awesome. Well done. Um, there's things to be uh, explored, and they will be explored. Brought to you by Wicked French Fries. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks. Sorry. No, that was good. That was really you good. You can't just tell me, like, whisper in my ear. Uh, you no! Don't, you don't want to know. Come on. No. I Spoilers? Think, I think Michael is, in, is indifferent to humanity. I think he's got bigger potatoes to fry. Yay! Thanks guys, I'll be here till the afternoon or something. I don't know. <laughs> Hello! Uh, you're really relishing that spud joke. Good work. Hello. So this is a question for all of you. So, um, I am a very big inspire er, aspiring actress. I've wanted to act ever since I can remember. Awesome. And so, I was wondering if you guys had a, is something happening? Sorry. I don't know, is something happening? Something's happening. What's going on? So there's a bit of a, mur a murmuration going on here. What's going on? Are we okay? Okay. Everyone's okay. Okay, carry on with your question. Sorry. You're an aspiring actress. Yes. Okay. So it's like my dream to work in some kind of like sci-fi or like action stuff. Awesome. And so I was wondering what your guys' acting journey was like to get to where you are right now. Well, how long do we have? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> my favorite question. No. Um, I didn't look. It's 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 it. I started when I was very young, but not professionally. My sister was uh, was, big, was very passionate about making me look stupid, so she put on plays in our garage, or garage, as you guys call it, um, and, uh, and the neighbors would come in and I would just be standing there in my mum's wig, and uh, uh, she had a wig, I don't know, they did that in the 80s, and, um, and her nurse's outfit, <laughs> this is really a photo about that, and, and just like that time, I kind of got a lot of love for it, and then I watched her do a play when she was in middle school, um, and I was like nine, and I was like, wow, this is, looks awesome. They were doing a production of Oliver. And so after that then, like, it's a long, long story, but uh, that's kind of was my first kind of introduction to it, and that I really had a love for it after that. Um, I would say that it's, uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, it's a long, winding journey. Uh, it's also, um, if, you, if you love it that much, you like, you, work. It takes work. And self-motivation. No one else is gonna 
do it for you and you've got to do the work when no one wants it because eventually they will want it and you better be ready otherwise you know, you know what I mean yeah, yeah, we'll um, the cherry. yeah so uh, it's, it's just uh, hang in there and, and watch other people and read a bunch of books and see what other people are what they've done learn from their mistakes and their successes mm -hmm. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> no, it's about your active journey, though. Well, I would guess our acting journey is going to be much different than yours because when we started, it was literally cutting out resumes, stapling headshots, and sending them in the mail, mm -hmm. and going every morning or Wednesday mornings to get the backstage west and get the audition postings and and writing the addresses and putting them in the mail and waiting for the call and that, much different these days. Like you have so much. You guys more, email. <laughs> you have much more power. <laughs> you have much more power than, <laughs> than we did. You have so much at your fingertips with the internet, obviously, but then also what you can make on your phone is leagues ahead of what we had to do to get into, like, say, a student film. Yeah. So just like what uh, the character Adam here is saying is just keep doing it. Just do it, do it, do it. On your phone, with your friends, and then at some point, hopefully. Uh, I, that, that's great advice. Like, but it's, and, and, and also, the, you've got more access, but it's also the, the competition is so much stronger. You go onto YouTube and you see, like Richard Spate's kids, or no, no it's it, Rob Bendix's kids make these kind of like action movie things on their phone. They're like, you know, 15 and 10 or 12 or something like, you know? So, the standard is so much higher. Everybody keeps pushing the boundaries of how, of cutting things. And you look at Instagram or you look at whatever, and it's it's amazing what people do. I'm like, oh my god, can you cut my show reel? Or can you, here, child, here, here, four year old, can you film my self tape? Um, and it, but like, so it's sad, and, 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 and what the guys really said is like it's so important. There's no, there's no, you're the, you're the only person looking after your career. Your agents, your managers. If you get that far, that's. No one really cares, so you've got to do all the work yourself, and that's, I think it's the most daunting thing about anything. You know, uh, a lot of people just like, like the comfort of a, a 9 to 5 job, job, like I've had lots of friends who are actors back when I started, and they've all, not all of them, but some of them have quit because they wanted to have a family and have kids, and you know, not that you can't, but it's like it's harder, you know, it's, 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 it's definitely harder. So, um, like someone says, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, was it Michael Caine that said, pay me for the uh, waiting around the actings for free? Yeah. Um, because you're waiting around most of your life and then you get to do what you know, Jake was doing last week or whatever. It's like it's, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing gift, it's an amazing feeling, but you, you're on your own. You've got to do it yourself. Yeah, patient. That's, a, that's abstract. I think the most concrete thing is get a get great headshot that shows who you are and get an agent. Because mm -hmm. you won't get a lot of work without, without a, a, an agent. Yeah. And then go from there. It's like, there's no, when I was young, I used to be like, oh, I wish someone could just tell me, like, I wish Leonardo DiCaprio could just tell me how he does it. Not going to happen. Because each experience is individual, and yeah. you're only as good as you push yourself. I know, it's like, you know, I remember, I remember going Don't ask actors actor questions, because we will go <laughs> on. <laughs> but that's it, like, you know, like, you know, do, are you a Stanislavski, or do you read Ruth, uh, 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 what's her name, Hagen, um, Uda Hagen's book, um, and, and, and it's like, but you cherry pick from all of them. Like, you know, David Mamet's True and False or Heresy, whatever. Most of it's crap. It's, there's, yeah. some, there's some stuff in there. But there was really, like, you pick out, but he's like, the actor's just merely the medium to get my words on the stage. Ugh. And you're like, fuck you, David Mamet. <laughs> but he does. Someone tweet that out. Yeah. <laughs> so, other kids, do we all sign the thing again today? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> fuck shit balls. You can say anything. <laughs> well, you can. Earmuffs. You can say anything, <laughs> should you? Thank you, sorry. Thank you, Hope guys. you got something out of that. Good luck. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, it's actually my birthday convention this time, so I'm very happy. Happy birthday. Are you ready? Thank you. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And anyone else whose birthday it is? Happy birthday, dear you. Meg. Meg. What's your dog's name? Zool. 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 What's up, Zool? You there is only Zool. Exactly. Your ears yeah. are up. You know what I'm talking about. Zool. Oh, oh you're a dog? Oh, you're a good dog. So, 
Like I spot your dog as soon as you walked in, but I mean, I've been studying that dog. I've been eyeing that dog. Anyway, what's your question? Um, so I don't think I've asked, get, gone to ask this to you guys before because I've done it on uh, other conventions, but what do you think each other's useless superpower would be? You can't give your own, it has to be the other two given to you. <laughs> like, for example, my friends decided mine would be that I could make the mating call of any animal for... Yeah, that's, 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 that's useless? <laughs> Zulu would be happy. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you could turn uh, water into potatoes. <laughs> like, a, like an Irish Jesus. <laughs> Order to poutine. Poutine? Poutine? No, yes. not poutine. No, no. No. Yes. You know what poutine is? Yes. Irish. Yes. It's Irish. It's like it's literally oh. like the way we would, oh. we would make it. It's Irish vodka. Yeah. It's, well, you can make that out of the potatoes that you make out of water. But that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you could just make water into poutine, which would be more like. No, no, no. That's not the steps. That's not what I'm giving you. <laughs> but that's not useless at all. You know, he'd be a millionaire. <laughs> you would not want to be able to turn water into potatoes. That would get old so quick. Actually, that's how it potatoes really, are you, made. You'd have to do so much work to get to the other part of it. <laughs> um, I agree with that. Uh, I suppose I should do you. Oh, I don't know. Or, I don't know. Is that you that's probably you do him. Him. I, I, I think you want to use prefer to do him. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, let's see. You, the, you could turn all your shoes into powdered milk. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty useless. <laughs> you could grow your fingernails on demand. <laughs> like Meg does in... Like Meg. In, that's what I meant. Yeah. That's exactly what I meant. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like like I, say, I, get, I get the whole shut up make thing all <laughs> None of ours were as creative as you could make the maiden call of any animal. That's <laughs> some creative friends. <laughs> Envious. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Be good. No. She good knows up no other way. Good girl. Thank you, Meg. Thank you. Oh my god, Jake, question for you. <laughs> Actually, the question's for all three of you this time. <laughs> Um, I was wondering what your favorite movies are, or and also who your favorite movie actor or actress is. Uh, that's a long list. I mean, right off the bat. You know, I, 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 like, uh, David Hayden Jones is a great answer to this. He's like, he doesn't do well with favorites because there's so many great things that you've experienced over your life. And, um, I agree wholeheartedly with it, but because, you know, I could. I, Tootsie is one of my favorite films of all time. Yeah. Justin Hoffman is. Awesome in that movie, you know. Um, anything with Robin Williams, like it's you know, there's the, there's literally there's the endless list of stuff. Paper Moon, oh, great movie. Uh, Peter Bogdanovich film. There will be blood. And, I was gonna say that there will be blood. And Porky's. And then that also Porky's. Like, <laughs> gives into the favorite actor with there will be blood. So the serious that's one of and the, the best performances <laughs> of film history is Daniel Day Lewis and there will be blood. Yeah, he's awesome. You know, a buddy of mine played the young Christy Brown in My Left Foot. Do you know, you ever seen My Left Foot? Have you ever seen My Left Foot? Yeah. He won his first Oscar for My Left Foot. And a buddy of mine that I was working with, he played the young version of him in that movie. And uh, he's amazing in that movie, Danny Dennis. He's just off the charts. Um, Brenda Fricker as well, great movie, yeah, My Left Foot. There's like this, it's such a, well, what's your favorite movie? Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, I I, I, I I golf with the guy who plays, uh, who rapes Tim Robbins in that movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Next question. And see. Hi guys. Uh, like, uh, my question is for Jake. But uh, first of all, I want to say that you were awesome in Percy Jackson, the first one and the second one. Thank you. <laughs> you had me. I was hanging there. I was like, the first one? And the second one. Pretty shit in the second one. Pretty shit in the second one. Well, you phoned it in. Yeah, phoned it in. Uh, phoned typical it. sequel yeah. behavior. My question is, um, what other actor would you, uh, do you like to work with most on the set? Um, it, it's between Jared or Jensen. I won't say who. Not Misha. Oh, you look good. Um, no, Misha and I actually... We, oh, no, I can't say anything. Oh, shit. You're almost... Woo-hoo! 
I knew what you were doing there. That's close. awesome. Um, uh, ooh, I, you know, I, I can't, it's almost like asking what your favorite movie is because I've been I've been very fortunate that I've worked with a lot of uh, great actors who are also great people, and that's uh, very rare. <laughs> so I, I mean, I couldn't uh, I could pick one, but to go on theme with the Percy films, um, Alexander Daddario, who uh, played Annabeth. Uh, she was a very close friend. She was uh, one of my wife's bridesmaids. I go to her house at least once a week to check on her dog. There's always something, her dog door's open or something. Um, but uh, she's remained a very close friend uh, out of those films. So, all these ten years later. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. I have Hi. a question for all three of you. Uh, for each one of you, what was your favorite scene to shoot in Supernatural? Go ahead. Go ahead. Jake can't answer. All of them. Yeah, that's a good question. Definitely not the one where I got shot in the head. No, I don't like that either. And I, and I actually, it actually was a very fun uh, one to film, but uh, <clears throat> my very last day of filming on Supernatural was um, the big fight with uh, Dayon. Um, and uh, it was like one scene that we shot, well it was like two scenes, but uh, the, the majority of the work was done in this big action sequence over 14 hours we were filming it, and it was, it was incredibly fun because we did it at night, it was my last day, everyone made it very special, so it was kind of a, it was a, it was a special day, and it's a, but they were all so much fun, all of them, every day on set, Supernatural was just brilliant fun. It was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed uh, his, the first episode that Asmund Days appeared in. The entrance, I don't think I'll ever have a better entrance on anything. <laughs> and the speech about the history with him and Lucifer was, I, I just, the writing was incredible in that. And yeah, I love it all. That but, was chilling. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, and honestly, not as a joke, uh, there were two scenes I, I cannot currently talk about. <laughs> uh, that, uh, uh, you're already brought in here to bubble up season. Yeah, yeah it really was. I got a job, a single job. Uh, but it's the truth. Uh, there, were, there were a couple of scenes that definitely uh, sort of took first place as far as like uh, the fun that uh, I got to have. So, so you mean I actually have to get caught up and watch the new season? No, you can just watch episode eight of this. <laughs> That's fine. No, thank it won't affect me. <laughs> Well, they did blow me away when I first working, started working on the show. The, the the quality of the writing of the show, like you know, you, I you know, not that I um, I was I was surprised, but I don't know why I was surprised. But it, it was like, and then I know Bubba Burns quite well be, from beforehand, and like I was just the, the 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 degree and the level to keep a show going and keep it fresh for 15 years. A show like this, it's crazy hard. It's so hard not to be repetitive. It's so hard to kind of reinvent yourself every couple of years and. Uh, it's an, that's, that's an, like the, you know, we talk about how great Jared and Jensen are as leaders, and it's so true, but the writers are uh, a huge part of what, why the show went for as long as it did, and it's, uh, it's a credit to them. They're all yeah. in, in our industry, we have this terrible word called demographics, right? And it's like men and women, age this and that, this and that. And I was, years ago, when I, before I first did my first episode, I thought I wasn't the demographic. Right? Me too. Right? I told you. And then you. a friend of mine who was a big fan, she was like, You had to sit down and watch a couple episodes before you go do this show. I love it. And I had no idea, just like you said, how smart and how funny it was. And I was like, This show is for everyone, which is why I think you see every kind of person at these conventions. Yeah, yeah. And that was like um, uh, such a, a great discovery uh, for me, and it sounds like uh, for you guys as well, because, uh, yeah, you. you you get these thoughts in your head that things aren't for you, and like it's just bullshit. I'm not CW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this show is uh, stands alone. It's very, very special. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, it's kind of sad, isn't it? Um, sorry, carry on. You can up there. Let's get another one in. Let's get another one in. One more question. One more. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. Oh. Yeah. Isn't the homes out for a while? Three weeks. He's injured. Four weeks. Four weeks. He's missing that big game against the Packers. the question? Sorry, question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, so I don't know if someone's asked this already, so sorry if they have, but uh, what's your least favorite scene you've had to shoot in Supernatural? Anything with Jensen and Jared? <laughs> <laughs> The, the, 
death scene, of course. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, what I had to... Uh, as it was you can't like, talk about season, it. I can't talk about it. It's all right. Uh, no, uh, when I... Uh, I think it was Jared had the wound and I had to stick my finger inside of it and like... Excuse me? Blood. Was it on set? No. <laughs> Extra work there. But the blood, they're like, oh, the blood's chocolate-based. It was not. <laughs> it was like garbage-based. It was awful. Second least favorite, a uh, Molotov cocktail that wouldn't break on my nipple. Yeah. When Misha, come on, this is like a very famous scene in this show. Misha, hey ass butt, throws a Molotov cocktail, it will not break, and my nipple got bruised. This is like, this is like a known thing, guys. Did you, did you skip chest day? Huh? Did you skip chest day? Yeah. <laughs> uh, mine was exactly that. <laughs> Just harder, harder, damn it! I don't know, getting shot by David Hayden Jones wasn't great fun either. I kept trying to move my head when we were saying, and I was like, I missed, but he got me in the end. <laughs> yeah, I, I screamed out, I'll be back! And they cut it, they cut it. <laughs> Sons of bitches, man. It's like yeah, fucking sad. Just, I felt like I really died on Saturday. I felt then. like I died too. Wow, what an uplifting way to end the panel. Ladies and gentlemen. Some things we do here are fun, some are not fun, some are serious, and some are games. That means it's time to play a game that we're not going to play with you because we would lose, because we haven't done our homework. But you have, and I want you to stay here with this one. It's really easy. There's only two answers to this. It's either yes or no. Some I had to come out. I don't have the clean, crisp diction of a young Robinette. Fair. 